cooking with Sarah. Oh my god. No. Unless like frozen? frozen setting. I don't know. Oh, cold. You're fired, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're having cream cheese, but do you want some um No. Have you ever been staring at your toaster at home and thought, hmm, this really needs a touch screen? No? Me neither. But if you are that person, we've got the product for you. This is the Revolution Cooking Instaglow R270 Toaster. Let's unbox it. Revolution Cooking makes three different toasters. They've got the R270, which we have here, which is the bad boy, big boy toaster. They also have the R180 and the R180B, but those two only offer a selection of five different breads where this one offers a selection of 34 different bread types, including gluten-free cooking options. Uh, so this toaster retails for 30, no, yeah, no, 399.95 USD, which is a lot for a freaking toaster. But not only does it have a touch screen, Revolution Cooking claims that their Instaglow technology cooks faster, hotter, and more precise and consistent than the average toaster. So I'm really excited to see if that is in fact true, and we'll find out if their smart toasting algorithm really is revolutionary. We've got a quick start guide for those of you who don't like to just go into plugging your toaster in and trying it out, which is what I'm gonna do. Right off the bat, it is quite hefty. It does feel expensive, and I will say it looks expensive. It feels about six pounds, six and a half. Yeah. They also do have attachments that you can buy on the side. So the two attachments they have are a heating attachment. So you can put that on top for like pastries or like muffins, I guess. You can warm them up. And a panini press, which I have here. Instead of buying a $100 panini press, let's get a $100 panini press attachment for my $400 toaster. <laughs> wow. It's got a magnet in here, so it magnetizes closed if you do it properly. This toaster toasts all the types of bread, including gluten-free. But you know what else is gluten-free? Our sponsor. <laughs> Thanks to mechanicalkeyboards.com for sponsoring this short circuit. Picking a new keyboard can be overwhelming, but thankfully, mechanicalkeyboards.com makes it easy. They have helpful guides and resources for information on switches, boards, and what layout is right for you. Shop brands including Keychron, HHKB, Leopold, Vortex, and more, with free shipping in the USA. Check them out and use code LTT at the link in the video description. Is it on? <gasps> we got bread, <laughs> Even though the toaster offers 34 different bread types, you can only have 10 on the main menu at a time, and you have to flip through two pages of five different bread types. It sounds like a toaster with a touchscreen is more inconvenient than it is like actually a good thing. Selection preferences. Wow, okay, I see. All right, let's check out. I, I really wanna go through all the bread options, but there's 34. Currently, I'm seeing the 10 favorite bread types. We've got bread. Bread is a good bread type, I will say. Bagel, panini, frosted pastry, English muffin. Wow, now we got all the different bread bread types. Multigrain, cinnamon swirl, waffle. But the real test will be seeing whether or not the pictures are accurate to how toasted it will toast your bread. This is seven heat. Does anybody eat burnt bread? Like seriously, comment below and let me know if you actually enjoy eating burnt bread. I have room temperature bread here, but if you have frozen bread or you wanna reheat your bread, the Revolution Toaster gives you that option. While I don't have a gluten intolerance, this toaster offers a gluten-free option. So when you're cooking bread that doesn't have gluten, it will make adjustments when it's toasting it so that it still toasts perfect like a regular bread that includes gluten or that has gluten. The toaster doesn't connect to Wi-Fi or anything. So it's just the firmware. Oh no, it doesn't even have firmware. It doesn't have firmware for like, uh, updates and stuff, which could be a good thing because then you don't have to continue to update your toaster all the time. But on top of that, you can't like see how long your toast is gonna be on your phone or anything. It's just this. Shall we get to making bread? Yeah. Who needs a plate when you have an LTT store Northern Lights disc pad? I bet they don't have a light rye option. I bet it's just rye. It doesn't look like 34 options here when I'm looking at the list. I guess I just put it in. <laughs> Oh, I have to press 
start. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Okay, wonderful. Wow, this is the hardest part for me because I get frightened easily. And so sitting and staring at the toaster waiting for my bagel in the morning, it can be scary sometimes. Oh, it's counting. Oh, is it gonna explode? Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> it was so gentle. Hey, good. Does it Does it compare to the picture at all? Yeah, what is with this? This is supposed to be a premium product and it doesn't even toast my entire bread. <laughs> it's got a gradient going on here. First go is kind of disappointing. ASMR. <laughs> I think I like a soft toasting, like a two. So like if you have to get up early in the morning and you have a baby or you have a spouse who needs to sleep, this is actually quite convenient because you're not gonna wake them up with the horrifying noise of your toaster popping. That's the best feature. Like just make a toaster like this. Forget the touch screen, nobody needs that. But a quiet toaster. We also have options. Peanut butter, got it. Light cream cheese, got it. Four cheese bagels, got it. This is the best option though. Pop-Tarts. Not only do we have just these. <gasps> okay, that's not bad. What is with this? It cooks half. You would expect an overall browning of your toast when you're paying $400 for a toaster. And it's supposed to be smart, but like half toasted bread isn't that smart. This has become cooking with Sarah. Let's get a nice cut down the middle. You know what? That is exactly how I like my toast. Except for the half and half part. That's kind of meh. Our Instacart guy didn't get regular cheese. He got light cream cheese. So we're gonna make a light cream cheese grilled cheese with our panini press. <laughs> I think I put it in like this and then squish it. It's gonna melt into the toaster. <laughs> this is gonna be really lame. I wanna see like how toasted and melty the cheese gets. I've never put cream cheese on bread like this. It feels so wrong, like it feels so wrong. <laughs> Do I put a Pop-Tart in here? I'm so tempted though. All right, I've got my handbag. We're ready to go out to town. Wow. Look at that, we have half of our bread sticking out the top. You know, a hundred dollar panini press would actually get the entire bread. Just let that sink in for a sec. <laughs> Tim Hortons doesn't take this long. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. I'm honestly not that impressed. I think it, it's got some little toast marks here. Oh, I didn't set it. Wait, did it have a set though? I don't think it had a set mode. Oh my gosh. Oh, it totally did. Okay, can I, I'm gonna put it back in. <laughs> Well, now my panini grill marks are a little off because I didn't put it in normally, but it is like squished together, which I assume is like what a panini press is supposed to do. You've got panini grill marks. It's just, why would I wanna make a panini in my toaster? I guess it's a convenience thing. Like, oh, instead of taking up room with a panini press and a toaster, I just have two in one. Panini press costs $79.95 USD which is still horrendous, but <laughs> cheaper than $100. So maybe, just maybe, you would prefer buying this over a regular panini press. Look at this. <laughs> I'm like progressively getting sadder and disapp more disappointed. I, it, I mean, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. I just expect more from a product like this. Ah, oh, come on, Dempsters. Look at this, they didn't pre-cut their bagels. Regular toasters, it usually tells you, I think, to put it this way, but it does specify right here that it's supposed to face inwards for toasting. Okay, the bagel setting, I approve. It's a little light here, but overall, you've got a toasted inside and then a nice soft outer shell. I'm impressed. <laughs> I've had my fair share of making toast. I'm really interested to see if other people can perfect their favorite toasting of bagels, Pop-Tarts, English muffins. So I'm gonna call over a couple of LTT staff to try this thing out for themselves. David, Order come up. make yourself a Pop-Tart. Yeah, I've been hovering around for half an hour Here. waiting for this free food. You take the stand. There's an eternal battle of uh, what's the best Pop-Tart flavor. I, I'm a strawberry boy. Anyone else want a Pop-Tart? How do I do this? Start. No, no, no. no. Bread, English muffin. Oh, there's actually a setting. That's so exciting. No, 
Wait. There's toaster strudel. Damn it. Yo, that's tight. Three, two, one. That's a zero. I am not doing it for the camera. Sarah mentioned doing this, and I'm like, this could be the best thing in my entire life. Now put it in the panini press. This is the Whoa. real tech tip. <laughs> it's not bad. It needs more sweetness. Like, you'd almost need to scrape out the jelly from like seven Pop Tarts. How many Pop Tarts do we have? It's a toaster. So, does it know that I have like a frozen toaster strudel oh, based it on the. Like frozen? frozen setting. I don't know. Oh, cool. You're fired, bro. <laughs> Of course I have a toaster. Uh, I paid about $20 for it and it toasts pretty well. Does okay. it feel like it's taking longer than your normal toaster? It does, but I've never been this involved with my toaster before. I don't usually sit by my toaster and go, it's ready. Whoa, Whoa it, okay, hold on. It is sufficiently browned. I don't oh, know if we can catch. No, no, it's on the other side too a little bit. A little oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it is only on one side. Actually, that's kind of a big fail. This is probably a cinematographer's nightmare. Okay, hold on. The true test, I gotta get to the middle. What's in there? Cause anyone that has ever had a toaster strudel knows that toasters can never get through to the middle. And then the middle's always kind of like lukewarm. This is still lukewarm, but a little bit less <laughs> lukewarm. <laughs> no, no, but hey, stop, stop. Wait, can you do that? Yeah, true. Can you do one different thing? Well, that's a that's an immediate uh, demerit. Honestly, just seeing this, how much is it? Seeing that waffle there made me want a I waffle. I want a waffle too. Maybe we, this can be a test. You Wait. put an English muffin in one side, I put a bagel in the other side, and we see if the AI. We can't. That, We're not allowed. Yeah. Well, if it's supposed to be. Oh, hold on. If it's supposed Wait. to be sentient. What? Yeah. Hold on might. a second. Just from an interface perspective, I'm scrolling through a cycle I'm of. Riley side. I'm, like, I'm so scrolling through a cycle of things, and then there's two pages of cycles. Well, that Sunbeam toaster had a had a this had like actually, a metal thing that would sense the heat coming off the toast. Put your hand there. Yeah, I know. I'm, but there's hopefully a sensor in there. But I certainly. The hope Sunbeam so. toaster. Pick the toastedness. You gotta pick your toastedness. Well, you know what? You know what's the difference between bagel and uh, regular toasting, though, right? Bagel toasting is yeah, just one well, side. Not. Yeah, but do you want your English muffin cooked like a bagel? No. Or do you want the bagel cooked like an English muffin? That because one. you have to pick. You want an English muffin. No, I want the bagel cooked like an English Perfect. muffin. That's right, that's what I mean, yeah. So, uh, go to your English muffin English setting, muffin selected. And then you have options at the bottom. Here's, do you see these? The, They're numbers. Oh, look, it even has a picture of the bread. Yes. <laughs> oh! It will show you the toasted. Don't do that one. Okay, we'll do four. Three, two, one. Begin. There, look at, do you see the smoke coming out? Yeah, that's the toasting process. I've see never this. seen that happen in a, in a toaster. It'll let you go as hot as you want, but it will also call uh, the authorities. Is there a brioche button? <laughs> Is there a brioche button setting? Because brioche buttons are really fickle. Like you, you toast them and then they're burned if you're not careful. Tell me about it. <laughs> I didn't Whoa. Know settings. Oh, that's it's got the bottom of it. There's. <laughs> look at the this difference. good? Okay. You're having cream cheese, but do you want some? Um... No. It's actually pretty well toasted. I'll give it credit. Toast made by a toaster. Is it four hundred dollars well toasted? Not sentient. Well, that was interesting. After toasting so many products, obviously you get breadcrumbs that fall to the bottom. And in order to make sure your toaster is not going to catch on fire from all of those breadcrumbs, you have to empty your toaster. It's a nice little push to open feature. You pull it on out. And there we've got all of our wonderful breadcrumbs. What's the consensus here? I feel like people enjoyed using the toaster, but at the same time, every single person's question kind of was, why? It toasts bread and toaster strudels, and you can make a panini, but is it worth the $400? Honestly, I don't think so. It looks cool, it feels cool when you're using it, but it functions just the same as any other toaster. If you're interested in seeing everybody's full thoughts of the toaster, we'll be posting a uncut version on Floatplane, um, so go check that out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, and if you're interested in seeing a different interesting piece of tech, go watch my Nike Adapt Air Max video. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Take the toaster with me.